Hi everyone, I'm Miran. This is my third talk for the Golan user group. Um, thanks for having me. Uh, I work at a startup called Infosum. We are a data collaboration startup uh, out in Basingstoke. I've got a couple of my colleagues here today as well. I've been using Go for almost three years. Um, I've been collaborating, um, contributing to a lot of open source projects. I've been contributing to the Go programming language and I run a blog mostly talking about gRPC and Go. And I'm here today to talk about writing REST services for the gRPC Curious. And you'll notice how I restrained myself and didn't make a pun about gRPC Curious. People <laughs> like to do that. So you're welcome. <coughs> so let's take a quick look at what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to try and keep it short because um, there's another talk after mine and we've already gone on for quite a while. So most of this is going to be take, taken up with uh, a demo. So I'm just going to cover some quick parts to start with uh, to set the scene. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, REST JSON. The, the status quo when it comes to uh, microservices communication today, a little bit about uh, gRPC, and um, finally just a quick introduction to the tool that we're going to be using. Try it next a bit larger, maybe. Oh, ah, never mind. This is <laughs> this is the percent tool. <laughs> All right. So, and then finish off with a little bit of a, uh, a demo to to show you how easy it is to to do. So, uh, well, let's start with a, a show of hands. Who here has uh, designed a microservice with a JSON slash REST API surface? I, I thought so, yeah, so that's most of you, that's cool. All right, so who's designed a microservice with a gRPC API surface? Okay, so that's not that many, yeah, but, but still quite a few. Okay, so who's wanted to design a microservice with a gRPC API surface? Come <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna say that was, a lot of people, yeah. A lot of people. <laughs> Come on, guys. Uh, so, I'm a gRPC guy. I've been like most of the talks I've been given, I've been talking about gRPC. Um, but um, I think most people will be using REST and JSON. So, uh, when, when I when I try and sell gRPC, most people will say something like, "Well, you can't view the payload on, on the wire uh, and things like that." But um, today, I'm going to show you a, a way for us to to get a gRPC and combine it with REST uh, in an easy way. And actually, it's incredibly easy, even if you just want to write REST services. Um, so, next up, the, the gRPC gateway is the project I'm talking about. It uh, started out as a, as a copy of an internal Google product that they, they uh, couldn't make public. So it's an open source project. Uh, it translates JSON REST messages to uh, gRPC and back. So you've got a, a gRPC server, a small, proxy in the front uh, of it, and um, you speak JSON slash REST to it, and it, it sends the, the, uh, the translated gRPC request to the back end and translates the response back to you. So you get the benefit of, of, of making something in gRPC, but you still expose a, a REST API. Uh, it, it's very easy to use. Just a simple annotation in the profile, it's very natural. Uh, it provides a swagger slash API uh, generator, so you can define your, your types, uh, your, your interface completely within the profile, and it will uh, generate the Swagger file for you that your front-end devs or whatever can, can use if they like. And uh, it's uh, widely used within the GoGRPC community um, with uh, large customers such as CockroachDB and CoreOS. Uh, so let's, uh, let's see it in action. I've, that's probably hopelessly small now, but uh, I've, I've created a GRPC Gateway boilerplate repo. So if you want to, and you have your laptop at hand, which is approximately two of you, you can <laughs> you can open that link and uh, and take a look. But uh, otherwise, let's just see if I can mirror the screen. <clears throat> this is this is I. Whoa, that didn't. Nope. Yeah, there we are. Can everyone see that? Is that large enough? That's too large. <laughs> is that still good good enough? Yeah. Okay. So, um, what I've done here is I've, I've already cloned the repo, obviously, because I wasn't going to wait for it gets to, to finish. Um, and uh, the first thing you want to do with this repo is uh, run a little find command to replace the imports, because I, you, you're not going to clone it probably into the, the same path that uh, I did. So, there's a, a helpful find command. It's in the readme. <laughs> so it just replaces everything for you. Next up, <coughs> uh, I just want to show it running. So, let's, let's just go around. It may not go. The, <laughs> The cool part is that it comes with an API, uh, open API documentation. Ooh. Aha, Ooh, okay, this is still full screen. There we go. So uh, it, it spawns a, a little, uh, uh, hosts an, uh, a Swagger documentation for you. 
So uh, you can you can browse the, the API very naturally here. Obviously, we've got two methods: uh, one that lists users and one that uh, allows you to add a user. We'll make that a little bit larger so you can see. Um, and this is this is the uh, just the default content of the repository because I thought we would add something so you could get started. Basically, that that thing comes entirely from this simple um, proto description here. So this. Here is a profile. We've got some imports and stuff. Everything is just set up for you to get started. Uh, so if you have some, some routes you want to define, you can obviously replace all of this, just put in your own. I'm going to add a, another route here just to show you how easy it is. Just copy paste, obviously. Programmer's best friend. Uh, we're going to call it just uh, get user. And uh, we'll need to create a new message uh, as a parameter. We call it get user request. And it returns a user, which is fine. Uh, this is no longer accurate. Instead, we're going to say we'll use the get verb. Makes sense, right? On this route. But let's take a variable as well, uh, user ID. So when you make a get call to slash API slash v1 slash users slash user ID, it will call the, the relevant function on the server. I'm just going to remove this description because we haven't got time. And obviously, we just need to define that message type, get user request. And it will just take a user ID parameter. If you want to read up about profiles, uh, that's outside of the scope of this, but the numbers don't mean that much. <laughs> For starters. <laughs> so having done that, we'll just run uh, make generate, which has all of the proto-complicated stuff done for you. You don't need to worry about that. Boom, that's really regenerated everything. Uh, you can, if you want to, you can look at the files they've changed, uh, but that's not that interesting. The, the interesting part here is that we have a backend server that uh, will now fail to compile because it doesn't implement the required interface. Now, this, this is part of what makes this so good because you've just defined the interface that you want to expose. Uh, you've generated the Swagger file, whatever, but now you've got a framework within which you can define the functionality of your server. You don't have to worry about like using a flip and mux or whatever uh, to, to define the routes explicitly in your application. You just have to implement this interface. And um, so it's, it, re it requires us to implement the get user function. So just copy that to the backend type. And it will obviously be doing a search through the users, oops, which are uh, defined on uh, on the backend struct. So it's just a linear search in this case. We're not going to try to be any cleverer than that. Okay, so let's do a for loop. No, first of all, let's lock the mutex. So And let's do a for loop for user range b users. If rec dot get, oh, okay, this has to Anyway, it will be user id equals user dot, oh, wait. Uh, I think I know what this is. Let's, let me save that to try to import it. Uh, I'm, I'm, there's a compile time error somewhere. Ah, anyway, I think I. Sorry? Uh, oh, sh thank you, Antonio. Oops. Does that, does that work now? I rely on my autocompletes. I hope I'm not the only one. So if, if those two match each other, then obviously we'll just return that user. And if we exit this for loop, then we haven't found the user. So someone's requested a user that doesn't exist. So we'll return a status error, which is the, the correct way to uh, have errors in gRPC. Uh, we have some good helpers here. Uh, we'll use the not found, which is correct, obviously, in this case, because the user was not found. And uh, user ID uh, didn't exist, something like that. Boom. So that's 
That is 100% business logic. That's the, the only thing that you had to implement in Go here. You've defined the profile, you've generated uh, everything, it just uh, asks you to implement the business logic and nothing else. So that's the, the beauty of this. Now, if we run again, it compiles. It compiles. I'm going to open that website again. I'm just going to need to make sure that we have, we're not using uh, a cache because, oops, let's reload that page. Oh, potential security. Yeah, that, ooh. Excuse me. That's fine. Oh, yeah, it's obviously set up to use TLS, but it's using a, a, a self signed certificate. You want to change that. But now let's take a look. Um, oh, my God, that's embarrassing. <coughs> let's reload this page again. There it is. Okay, so again, automatically we've gotten all of this for free just by adding another method to uh, the profile and, and regenerating. So hopefully this shows to you just how simple this is to use. So let's just try and, and, and call this and see what happens with something. That should return an error. Yep, error not found. Indeed, this is obviously translated to a 404, as you would expect. So uh, your front-end friends who um, are just looking on in bafflement as you write beautiful Go will get a, a nice 404 message saying, actually, that user doesn't exist. Uh, but if we add a user, okay, so that has just returned an ID for us. That didn't allow us to do anything else. Let's try and, and uh, look up this user. Now, obviously, this isn't all that useful because the only thing it's going to return is the ID of the user itself, but it works. And, uh, and in, in literally five minutes, I implemented the business logic for all of this, and we have a, a beautiful REST server. And now, what you have managed to do by the back door is sneak in a gfpc application in your stack. So you can tell your friends who want to write uh, gfpc in, in Python or C++ or whatever that you now have a gfpc server that you can make gfpc client calls to. And you can avoid all of this rubbish uh, because um, you obviously want to use gfpc instead. <laughs> and that was the... Uh, demo, so let's see if we can go back to, I don't think I had anything else to say. So I just want to give a quick thanks to Pusher for hosting us and to the meetup organizers. There's only two of them here today. You've done really well so far, thank you very much. Do we have time for questions? Uh, yeah, let's give us a couple of questions. All right, anyone? It was crystal clear, right? Yeah. <laughs> we can grab your hand at the end. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks again, Thank you.